are you guys? I know what you've been up to. Smuggling weapons to violent brigades in the desert while working for the Corps? <laughs> Pretty bold, if you ask me. Shh! Keep your voice down! How do you know all that? Come with me. We should take this elsewhere. I'll be happy to talk things over once we're somewhere private. This place should do. All right, back to my question. How did you all know about me? Don't worry about that for now. You know what kind of punishment you'll face once we report you to the core, I assume. Wait, wait, wait. There's no need to jump the gun. Let's talk this out. What are your terms? So what's in it for you anyway, Mora? Uh, well... I was a little tight on money at the time, and Kusela took good care of me in the past. I waited in my mind, and I couldn't find a reason to turn the opportunity down. I wouldn't only be helping my benefactor, but I could also make some quick mora. Let me tell you how it is. We're investigating Dakan Alakmar, and we're gonna put an end to their operations. If you provide some help for us, then we might just put in a good word later to reduce the terms of your punishment. Hey, why don't we discuss this a little first? Listen, I made quite a bit of more from my last run. You just give me a number, and I'm sure we can... Shut it. My patience is running out. You should know when a mercenary is after something other than money. All right, all right, sheesh. But you gotta promise you'll put in some nice words for me later. They're always on the move. Here's the spot they were at the last time I made my delivery to the desert. Feel free to go have a look. I'm just telling you, though, it's not on me if they're not there anymore. Sure. And then you can forget about any nice words from us. Hey, come on. Now you're just being unreasonable. Really? And how do I know you're not leading us straight into a trap? Don't forget, you're the one with no bargaining chips. All right, I get it, I get it. Why don't you go take a look, and if they're not there anymore, I'll try to figure out something else for y'all. <laughs> now that's more like it. Let's move. And as for you, try to stick around the city until we get back. You don't want us to call the folks from the core and have them drag you back to the city. Ah, uh, don't worry. Seems like we're in luck. That should be their camp right up ahead. Let's go. We'll finally get to the bottom of this ourselves. I'm here to see Kusela. Tell him to get out here. Uh, Tia, why are you here? Allow me. And step. Ha! I'll take my leave. Where do you think you're going? Haven't you all done enough? Oh, so are you also here to stop us? Stay out of this! It's got nothing to do with you!
No, oh, she she's so strong. Enough fighting. We all know each other, and I don't want to take things too far. Just bring Kusela to me. There's no use hiding him anymore. Uh... Did you understand a single word I just said, or do I need to bash your skull in some more? All right, everyone, let's all just calm down for a second. Um, Dia, the boss can't come out and see you anymore. He died a long time ago. What? Seems like you've been out of the loop for a while. Guess that's for the best, though. At least, that's what the old man wanted. When did he die? What happened to him? A few years ago, Kusela broke up Dakano Akmar and went to the Deshret's Relic's headquarters by himself. So is that when you guys started acting up? We would prefer to call it taking revenge. Every last person in Deshret's Relic's must pay in blood for what they did. <sighs> Let me start from the beginning. Dia, do you know how the head of the relics maintained order internally? Overwhelming strength and unquestionable authority? Those were a part of it, yes. But just those on their own weren't enough. They had another tool at their disposal. They called it a person's record. Regardless of whether they joined by their own will or were coerced, every person in Deshret's relics were forced to leave a record of themselves at headquarters. Whether it be their deepest sin, some unforgivable act, or their most immoral exploit, the record served both as a symbol of loyalty and the perfect material for blackmail. That's precisely it. Every one of us have a record. Me, Bashar, Tikridi, and all the boys who grew up with Dia and ended up joining our ranks. But you, Dia, you were never asked to provide a record, were you? I... I never even knew this was a requirement. You were probably the only person in all of Deshret's relics who didn't know about it. Ever since you were born, Boss had been trying to shield you from this organization's sinister rules. Not only that, but he also banned all of us from committing any nefarious acts. He said he'd take care of the dues we had to pay regularly to headquarters. But in the end, he was just an ordinary person. What could he do? He was forced to go to headquarters again and again to account for missed dues and incomplete records. He'd come up with all kinds of excuses and get beaten up as a result. We all knew he was doing that for you. He wanted to get you out of this world no matter what it took. And that's why he became a shell of himself and couldn't walk without a cane! Wait, but that doesn't make any sense. I didn't know about any of this, and I'd never seen him get injured or beaten. Because you were too young at the time. How would you ever tell between wounds from a beating and wounds from battle? When you left home after that final argument with him, he seemed to age by a decade overnight. Even his hair went gray. So even the blazing beasts were... Yep. It was all his doing. Had he not arranged them to come to you, you probably would have been reduced to a pulp before you ever left the desert. A few years ago, Boss said he needed to make another trip to headquarters. He was already pretty weak then, and we all assumed he was going to get beaten again. I suggested that he hand the role of leadership over to me, but he said there was no longer any need, since the Khan al-Ahmar would soon be no more. His words made no sense to me, but that night, we heard that a massive fire tore through headquarters and raised everyone's records to ash. Everyone gained their freedom that night. Many members fled, not just from our ranks, but from the other brigades as well. But how could we leave with a clear conscience? All of us who knew exactly what had happened. The boss can't have just died for nothing. Those heartless jerks at headquarters took him from us. From that point on, the sole purpose of Dakan al-Ahmar became revenge. The big fire that boss started was quite a blow to headquarters strength. It's given us the opportunity to launch our attack. Even though we're outnumbered, we vowed to see our revenge through to the very end. There were people from headquarters who changed their names and went into hiding. Some fled to other brigades, and others escaped to the rainforest. 
but we won't let any of them escape our wrath. They'll all pay for what they've done. We've suffered plenty of losses as well. To keep going, we need an enormous amount of supplies. From food and medicine to weaponry and explosives. All we can do is exchange our loot for Mora, and then use that to get supplies. We forged Boss's handwriting and sent out many letters to his former friends. Thankfully, many people were willing to come to our aid. We were also able to attract many mercenaries who shared our goal. We've endured unspeakable pain to win many impossible battles. Deshret's relics have become weaker and weaker, and now we finally have an opportunity to directly strike their headquarters. Uh, Paimon doesn't know what to say anymore. <laughs> we do know right from wrong. But we were sinners from the very beginning. We do not deserve the freedom that the boss won for us with his life. Boss always loved his old-fashioned hero stories. Those tales about sacrificing yourself to save the world. We used to always laugh at him for it. But in the end, he really went and lived those stories out himself. As for me, I never considered myself a hero. We're all the lowest of the low. We have no right to even imagine such an existence. But maybe those hero stories he liked foreshadowed everything that was to come. The spirit of the hero touched all those he had saved, and more and more people joined his cause. Maybe we were all just acting along with the play in the beginning. But as we acted the parts and recited the lines, we were drawn in. And now, we want to see the story through to the end. I'm sorry, Dia. I know you always found us insufferable ever since you were young. Just think of this as a madman ranting. <sighs> I'll go with you. Huh? Dia? You wanna go with them? I grew up with these guys, and I know they're not bad people. It's just that some situations get so bad that it's difficult to tell good from evil. All I know is that Deshret's relics must be destroyed. Furthermore, I want to go see the place for myself. I want to know if my father is still there. I know you don't want to get involved in this, so there's no need for you to tag along. I can do this on my own. Yeah, Paimon feels like we'd only regret it if we don't see this through to the end. <sighs> Thank you. We'll be a lot stronger together with you. <laughs> I bet Boss would lose his mind if he ever knew you'd join us at the very last moment like this. Considering all the losses and injuries we sustained, we can't afford to turn down someone as powerful as you. He can think whatever he wants. But the fact is, I owe him this much. I guess it all comes down to this. Oh, what a bummer. I just had to get injured now, right before the final fight. Be sure to punch one of them for me. Take it easy. This is the entrance? We sure didn't run into much trouble on the way here. Should be. I don't think they have enough manpower left to post guards and defend their perimeters.
Wow. Paimon didn't expect it to look like this on the inside. They should all be holed up in here. Don't know how many people they've got left, though. Who cares? We'll round up all of them. Still, we should be careful. Even if they've only got one shot left, it could still take us out. Yeah, we'll know what they're really capable of once we've landed some hits on them. Deshret's relics may have been a force to be reckoned with before, but their name means nothing now. Yeah, they don't stand a chance with you here. I'll take the lead. I've been here once before. You are not welcome here. This dance is for you. This way, follow me. We're almost there. Wait! They went charging ahead without checking for any traps! Hey, you guys okay? It seems like we just got trapped in here. Don't think we- Watch out! The enemy's coming from ahead! Well, now that things have come to this, Seems we'll have to fight our way through. Don't worry about us. We knew something like this could happen. Go and take a look around. There could still be another way through. Let's go! We can't let the boss down! Let's check if there's another way! The sooner we can make it through to help them, the better. Let's see. I think I see a way through over there. But it's being blocked by something. Let's try our luck with that mechanism. Okay, let's go! Another mechanism like the one before, but this one's being blocked off in the middle. We just need to adjust it a little.
I wasn't expecting anyone to make it through from the other side. But as a desert dweller, I suppose we should be used to our folks defying all expectations. Don't waste your breath. You have nowhere to run. Run? <laughs> Had I wanted to run, I would have fled a thousand times already. I witnessed the golden age of Deshret's relics. Even if I could leave this place behind, all that awaits me now are endless days of humiliation and ruin! Even now, my brothers and I still believe in one thing. The greatest should never live to remember their fall. Hm. So you want to go out in a blaze of glory? Let us draw our weapons! We will show them the true power King Deshret bestowed upon his followers. They are but two, while we hold within ourselves the entirety of the Relic's glory! Wave one, charge! Eliminate them! Allow me! I'll be back. With all my strength. I'll be back. Don't think that you won. We're just getting started. Now, your King Deshret will not abandon any one of his followers. Has finally fallen. But they're still coming at us! This place is like a gladiator's ring. They just keep coming no matter how many we beat! Yes! Keep fighting! There's no need to fear and no need to back down! This is our last stand! When the next wave comes, try to draw away their attacks. I'm going to see if I can take out that high platform. Get out of my way! Come!
Come and face me, Michel! Uh, so they've broken through the front as well. Apologies, Lord Michel. They just... they fight like absolute madmen! No matter how much we throw at them, they just keep coming for more! So, it would seem like this is the end. Time to pay for everything you've done, Michel. <laughs> you think I would give you that opportunity? I will be buried in the sand alongside all the rest of our fading glory. Hey, wait! We were too late. It's over. There's no more need to fight. But if you're still going to cling on to your so-called mercenary's pride, then I'll give you all a good beating as well. <laughs> hey, dear! I found the mechanism. I'll get you all back up here right away. Let's go. Are you filthy rats and why are you always pestering us <laughs> you call yourself a member of the infamous deshret's relics and you still can't even tell who's made it all the way to your headquarters <laughs> who knows what intent a bunch of rats may have we try to catch a couple and you all just show up on the other side instead how are we supposed to figure out what you're after hey have you ever heard of a man by the name of kusela <laughs> why would i know it's not like i'm in charge or anything this is your last chance to talk. Hey, I said I don't know anything. I'm just an average member here. I'm telling the truth. If you're here to find someone, why don't you look through the records yourselves? Who can remember every name and face with so many people coming in and out every day? The irony. His life became a light for so many. Yet to others, it wasn't even worth remembering. Where's the records room? Answer me. It's right over there. All the files are in there. You can go through them as much as you want. It's not like any of them still matter anyway. I mean the old records room. The, the old records room? You mean, the one that got burned down? Kusela. Ah, yeah, I remember him now. The guy who could hardly walk. Watch your mouth. That's our boss you're talking about. He was definitely faking it. We all let our guard down as soon as we saw him come hobbling in. But in the short time it supposedly took him to take a dump, he'd already gotten away and started a fire in the records room. He couldn't have possibly outrun us if he wasn't a fraud. And after that, Deshret's relics fell into complete disarray. Stop wasting our time. Every one of us here is perfectly aware of what he had done. Tell me, where is the old records room? It's just over there. Go see it for yourself if it means that much to you. There's nothing left in there but ashes. No human could ever survive that kind of inferno. Bashar, Tikriti, let's go. We'll leave the others here to guard these guys. Spare them no mercy if they try anything. <sighs> I've already told you everything I know. Can't you just leave me alone?
So, this was his final destination. How did he do it? Getting past all the guards with a limp and sneaking in here to start a fire? If he was nimble enough to do that, then he must have been able to get out of here after starting the fire, right? Tia... I'm sorry. I know it's just wishful thinking. Let's look around. Maybe we can find something that's been left behind. Hmm? Is this a cane? It must be the one that Dia's father used. Kusela. Thanks for everything, boss. We're fortunate to somehow find that cane after that fire. Let's split up and look around some more. What if something else has been left behind? But what else could survive a fire like that? Huh? is no more, for Princess Dia has slain it! Its head now hangs above the city gates. Her bravery has brought eternal peace and prosperity to us all. Dia, come on. This is the most important line. Um, um, you can do it. But Dia, you defeated the dragon. Everyone's waiting for your speech. <laughs> <laughs> Still too shy, huh? All right, I'll do it. I hereby proclaim our victory! Evil shall plague us no more! I hereby proclaim our victory! Evil shall plague us no more. What's this? Don't you remember? You asked Paimon what she would do if she were to wake up tomorrow with loads of money. And Paimon said that she would get boatloads of tasty snacks. You looked super confused at the time, but said it was an adorable thing to say. These opportunities don't come by often. So today, Paimon's gonna treat you to a special crash course on Paimon's life philosophy. Hey, come on! Paimon's not that stingy. Anyway, the point is that you should eat to your heart's content. You'll feel better for sure once you've gotten something in your tummy. Junior Zad will also be here shortly. She's already heard that we're back. Aw, thanks you two. Honestly, this is very unlike me. I just had a lot on my mind on our way back, so I didn't know what to say. My chest was filled with all kinds of intense emotions. They just shook me even more than all the feelings we've shared during our previous adventures. But when everything came to an end, those emotions also vanished without a trace, and I was left feeling more empty than ever before. It was as if I'd lost the thing that was most important to me. Yeah, you're right. To many mercenaries, Mora is the most important thing in the world. But perhaps to us, it's the most worthless thing of all. Idrisi and the others all used to say that they would quit if there was no Mora to be had. But when it came to avenging my father, there was no Mora to be made anywhere. My reality shattered when I found out that the father who always told me hero stories was in fact a bad guy. But look at me now. Am I any different? Despite all my promises about never forgiving him and never trying to understand him, I still went to such lengths to find out the truth and nearly even shed tears for his sake. We're hypocrites, 
All of us. Yeah, you're right. It's just a pity that we often only recognize our true feelings after it's already too late. You're back! Are all of you alright? Ah, there she is! Yeah. Many people from the Core of 30 came over, and I just wrapped up everything with my dad. All I can do now is wait for their verdict. Huh? Dia, you're looking quite down again. Paima will explain. A lot happened while we were gone. I'm sorry. I really should have controlled my emotions better. I, I just... I just... It's all right, my lady. You were hurt by all of this as well. Truth be told, I'm starting to feel a little guilty watching you cry like this. <laughs> Dia, oh, your pain must be even worse. You shouldn't need to comfort me. Hey, don't worry about me. If anything, this whole thing has finally shown me the difference between illusion and reality. My father probably thought that people could settle into new lives as long as they moved to a new environment. That thought has even crossed my mind a few times. It's like saying, what's wrong with adapting to a new life? However, there was always something deep within my mind that refused to accept it. This impulse brought me great turmoil, and even made me feel ashamed for turning my back on your father's kindness. But now that I consider it again... It all makes sense. The desert sands are a part of who I am, and I will never be able to lead a peaceful existence. I understand how you feel. That doesn't mean I won't be making any changes to my life, though. As an example, I'm now thinking about taking on some small odd jobs. It's just like Idrisi said. I also want to catch up to my father and become a character in his play. Even if the ending of the story may be childish and ridiculous, it won't really matter. Isn't that neat, though? Oh, you'll be a whole new kind of mercenary, one that's not out for Mora. Why don't we go for a change of scenery once we finish eating? Uh, what about stopping by the Grand Bazaar again? Right. You said you wanted to get a rug for your family. <laughs> I can't thank you enough for taking care of me this entire time. This rug here is quite something. The craftsmanship is exquisite, and the fabric is also of high quality. Ah, here you are. Finally, I found you. Hey, uh, aren't you that mercenary who bit his tongue? You can still talk? Wait, are you here to take revenge on us? <laughs> what are you talking about? Do I look like I could take you all to a fight? I just came here to give you something. I'll be on my way to give myself up to the core after this. Once I woke up, I hurried to the Khan al Ahmar's camp, hoping to alert them to your presence. But when I got there, I found no one except the members who were still too injured to move. Ah, so you probably got there after us. Yeah, they told me that they had exacted their revenge, and everyone had turned themselves into the authorities. Even that last camp was not going to last for much longer. I had joined the cause to repay an old favor from Kusela. Now that everyone's already turned themselves in, I might as well do the same. One of the injured members gave this box to me, and told me that it contained some of the old man's last possessions. Everything left in the camp will get confiscated, so I figured I should get this to you before the Corps could get their hands on it. Thank you. No worries. We are all just living our own truths. There's no need to comment or judge anyone for it. So this box contains everything that Dia's father left behind. Huh. It feels 
lighter than expected. Well, back in the day, the first thing he did with any Mora was spend it on things like drinks and meat. But let's see what's inside. Wh what's this? Uh, it's just a bunch of junk. It, ugh, it kind of stinks. Uh, perhaps it's just been left unopened for too long. Hmm. A handwritten copy of a storybook. The paper's already yellowed, and it looks like it's about to fall apart. It was against the Academia's rules to possess books for personal use. <sighs> if he was going to break that rule, he could have at least copied something useful. That probably means this was really important to him. Ah, and here are a few bags of children's snacks. The packaging's completely deteriorated. Maybe that's where the smell was coming from. Did he get those for you? Yeah, but here's the thing, though. Even when I was a child, I was never a fan of these kinds of snacks. He'd always say that he got them for me, but in the end, he always ate more than I ever did. Who even leaves snacks in a box like this, anyway? Isn't that just common sense? <sighs> Forget it. Let me see what else is in here. Mmm, a razor, some buttons, some round iron tiles, a wooden toy puppet, a wool scarf which, from the looks of it, probably belonged to a woman, and a hair clip? Uh, why are these things here? Uh, I, 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 I'm uh, suddenly feeling a little scared. I'm sorry, my lady, but this is just the kind of man he was. He probably saw this box as some kind of personal trash heap and dumped any and everything in there. One, no, two empty liquor bottles. Ugh. <sighs> Tell me, you guys, are these the kinds of things that a normal person would leave behind? Huh? There's something in the bottle! Oh, you're right. <sighs> Alright, I got it out. It seems to be a piece of paper with some writing on it. The bottom part's all damaged from moisture, though. Let's hope the writing didn't smudge. <clears throat> I was suddenly seized with an urge to write a letter after finishing this bottle. I just folded it up and left it in the bottle, though. If I end up forgetting about it, it won't really matter. To Dia. <gasps> it's a letter for me? It's all right. I'll just read it out. If he went to the trouble of writing a letter, there must have been some important things that he wanted to say. Or at least, record down. My condition's becoming worse and worse. Can't even walk without a cane anymore. Much less go out and have fun. Guess I don't have many days left. If you're reading this letter, then I suppose I'm already long gone. You were adorable as a baby. Everyone loved you. And regardless of whether you were crying or laughing, everyone enjoyed having you in the group. But once you grew a bit older, you were no longer nearly as happy or cute. It's probably Idrisi's fault. <laughs> he was never up to any good. <laughs> Can you believe this guy? He can point the finger at himself. Anyway, back to the point. To summarize, I'm writing this so you would know not to feel sad for me, even if you end up finding out the truth. The reason being that... <laughs> I was never your father to begin with. Wait, what? Surely, uh, he must be joking, right? I... I don't know. <laughs> uh, I was quite formidable when I was young, and a hundred times cooler than some so-called flame mane. <laughs> really felt like the whole world was under my feet. With just a teeny tiny bit of effort, I felt I could rule over the entire desert. But as fate would have it, I went out into the desert for a drink one day, and discovered a baby in the sands. It was you. You were just... Lying there, small and helpless. You were so tiny that if the wind blew for just a little while longer, you would have been buried forever. But your cries were so loud they made my head hurt. <laughs> now that I think of it, you really were a bundle of energy. Uh, sounds like he's serious. I told Idrisi and the others that I had slipped up with a woman while out and about. <laughs> None of them even doubted me. I'm sorry that I had to lie to them for so long, but I really had no other choice. 
I was their most esteemed leader, after all. It's not like I did just tell them that I suddenly wanted to play at being a father. <laughs> ah, at this rate, I'll puke up all the liquor I just drank from this bottle. <laughs> anyway, dear, you possess the kind of freedom and kindness that we could only dream of. As far as how you should live your life, that'll be up to you to decide. That's the end of the letter. In the end, he was still thinking of me as a little child. I suppose, or I would have suffocated under the sand a long time ago. He was a good father to you. The fact that he wasn't a blood relative doesn't change that. Yeah, it's just a pity that we had to learn the truth of everything like this. Do you already have some ideas about the decision that he wanted you to make? I do. If he first found me alone in the sands, then I want to try my hand at finding the person who abandoned me. I just have one wish. To tell them a story. That there once existed a childish and foolish jerk with a heart of gold. And that only under his care was I able to grow and mature into the person I am today. If you end up finding any leads, can you share them with us? We go on adventures all the time. Maybe we'll be able to find some information for you. <sighs> sure, I appreciate it. I wasn't expecting you to be so enthusiastic. I'll help too. Thank you. All of you. Thank you so much. My life has certainly had its twists and turns, but I've always considered myself lucky. Because no matter where I've gone, I've always been surrounded by incredible kindness. <laughs> <laughs>